Hi, I'm Ryan Stewart, an evangelist at Adobe. And today I'm going to talk about the WebSocket API, which is part of the HTML5 specification. WebSockets are really cool and really fun to use because instead of having to wait for the entire request response cycle to go through, the client, in this case the browser, can make a single connection to the server, and the server can then push information to the client whenever it needs to. So that means it's great for real-time communication or games or things where time is of the essence. Now, the HTML5 support for WebSocket is quite good. If you're a Flash developer, you will have seen a lot of WebSocket examples. But now, finally, JavaScript developers and HTML developers can take advantage of it. So here I've got a PHP file. Uh, in order to connect to a PHP so server, you need to create the server. And PHP allows the code to connect to server fairly easily. So I've created a PHP server here. And I won't go through all this code, but I'll talk about the basics. So I've got a connection that creates a socket connection on port 1740. And then we're going to basically accept the connection, go through and make sure the connection is, is OK and accept it. We've got something called the handshake, which basically makes sure that we are allowed to connect to this particular server from our client. And then I've got this send socket data, which is going to be called whenever we want to push data to the client. It's going to generate a random stock price and then give that to us on the browser using our WebSocket API. Now on the client side, so in the browser, I've got an HTML file. And I'm going to take this stock price data and plot it on a canvas chart. So you can see here I've got a button, which is going to call a start socket method, which will start the whole process. I've got my canvas set up. And then I've got some JavaScript to make that canvas appear a little bit more nice, a little more polished. So it does things like create grid lines. It's going to create numbers down the side so I can see some scale. And I have one other method called draw increment, which is going to have a quote passed in. And it's going to create a little circle on that graph at the value that I pass in for the particular stock quote. So let's go ahead and go up to the script block. And we will create a the function that we need to access the WebSocket or create the socket connection. So the, let me do that start socket function. So function start socket. And then the first thing you have to do is make sure that WebSocket is accessible for this browser. It's not supported in every browser, so it's a good idea to do make sure that you can actually use the WebSocket API. So if WebSocket in window is going to give us the information about whether we can use it or not. And then I can just set it up after I know it's available. So I can do var ws equals new WebSocket. And I pass in the URL and the port for the socket that I want to create. So in this case, it's localhost and that original 1740 port that you saw in my server file. So WS localhost 1740. And then the way we deal with data from the WebSocket is through a few events. So we get an open event when the socket is open. We get a close event when it's closed. And then there's an on message event which fires whenever we get data back from the server. So I'll start by creating the event handlers for those specific events. So I can do ws.onopen equals function that takes an event. And then we are going to just change our status div tag to show what the status is. So we'll do, uh, let's see, document.getElementById status. Dot inner HTML is going to be equal to open. And then I also want to call that draw canvas method so that when we open the connection, it'll set up the canvas and make it look pretty for us. Draw canvas. Then I can do the on close event. So ws on close is equal to a function that takes event. And in this case, I'll just do document.get element by ID status and set the inner HTML, the text there to closed. Now by far the most important method is the on message event. So that fires, like I said, whenever you get something back from the server. So in this case, whenever the server sends us a stock quote. So I can do ws on message equals function event. And then I will change the quote to show in text in the quote tag. So document get element by ID. And it's quote. Let me make sure it's quote. Oh, stock. Stock. Dot inner HTML. And I can just grab the event dot data property, and that's going to be whatever the server sends back to me into my client. So it's going to be event dot data, in this case, just that stock quote number. And then I also want to call that draw increment function and pass in the same data so we can plot it on our canvas chart. Dot increment and pass in event.data. 
and close that. And now just close our brackets and we should be ready to go. So I will go ahead and open Chrome and load this file. Rainier, uh, HTML5 socket HTML. So we see there, I've got the button, which is gonna call the start socket method. And when I call that, it'll op op hopefully open the connection, plot the graph, and then start charting the stock quotes as we get them. But the one thing I have to do before that is the way sockets in PHP work is you have to start the PHP file from the command line. So I'm just gonna do sudo PHP and then start my socket quote server. And you can see here, it's gonna be listening. So sockets created, it's listening on port 70. So now when we click this button, it should change my terminal as well as, and start sending stock quotes to me and charting them on this graph. There we're connected. So you can see the stock price being sent and you can see here in my canvas graph, we're slowly making our way down the chart as we get more and more data in real time from the stock quote file. So hopefully now you have a little bit of information about how to use the WebSocket API as part of the HTML5 specification. For information on general PHP sockets, you can look at Google, and all the code for this particular example is available on my blog, which is digitalbackcountry.com.